Hi everybody, I'm Bill Brennan, welcoming you to another edition of Honolulu on the Move, the show that brings you the latest news and information about the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. The Pesha Hawaii transport vessel Jinan had some precious cargo in its hold on its four-day journey from the west coast of the continental United States. As it pulled into the pier at Honolulu Harbor, workers prepared to unload from the ship the first train cars manufactured for Honolulu's rail system. The shrink-wrapped vehicles carried the logos of several of the companies responsible for building and shipping our first two rail cars to Honolulu. Without further ado, I'm going to ask our mayor to say a few words. Yeah, I want to welcome everyone down here to, I think, a pretty historic day. You know, we have twins. They finally arrived. And it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, we, we have many milestones on this rail project. They started as far back as 2009. And yes, we've hit a lot of bumps in the road. We have increase in construction costs. We have some slippage in schedule. But we also have a lot of good news to deliver. You know, we're into almost the eighth mile of our elevated guideway. And today we have the first two trains arriving. And it's really exciting. As you can see, we're going to unwrap them at the maintenance facility later. And you're going to be out there to cover that. But what I'm so proud of as mayor is these are the first driverless trains in the United States of America. They're not arriving in New York or Boston or San Francisco. They're arriving here in Honolulu, the first driverless system in the United States of America, meaning that we're not going to have as many people to work on the trains, which means we're going to save on the operation of this system. Here's the other thing. That one train car there actually can accommodate 200 people. Yes, they'd be standing and sitting, but it can accommodate that many people. That is five buses. So when you have four of these things hooked up, because you're gonna have a four-car train, 17 four-car trains when all the 80 trains arrive, 80 cars arrive here, you can get a maximum of 800 people standing up in the four-car train. That's 20 bus loads of people, 20. And they're gonna come in and leave during the peak rush hour period every five minutes. So that's like 20 buses arriving at a bus stop every five minutes and taking off. You could never do that with buses. The head, headway would not allow it. But with rail, it can. And during the non-peak hours, every 11 minutes or so. This is the way we're going to travel in the future. And while we have bumps down the road, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, people are going to ride this system and get on these cars and not even think twice about it. It's going to be part of the life here in the urban core. Now, one other thing I'm really excited about. When we open these cars, inside there is a surf rack. Not for small surfboards, but even stand-up paddle boards. And I don't think, Dan, maybe can verify it, of another system in our country that has surfboard racks. You're going to be also bring, be able to bring your bike on it. And you can ride to the station, get on with your bike. Marcel will love this. Get off, get off, get off with your bike and ride the rest of the way to work or home. If you have a wheelchair, you can come on with your wheelchair and lock yourself down so it's safe. If you have a stroller, you can bring your stroller in. If you have luggage, you can bring your luggage on board so that you can get to the airport and travel inner island or anywhere else around the world. It has Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. It has closed circuit TVs in every car to make sure that bad things don't happen. It has call boxes in every car in case you need to call it in an emergency situation. This is a system, it's technologically advanced. It, the car seats are attached to the side and not the floor, so it's easy to clean the floor every night. Much thought has been put into this car. And I want to thank Dan Grabowski. I want to thank Hart for all their hard work. You know, it's great to have a guy from Italy. He's the guy who actually made sure the cars got here. He didn't design them, but I have to say he's the best dressed man in Honolulu right now. His Italian designed suit and shoes, and he's a cool looking dude. But he's also a little hot right now, too. But, you know, cool things come out of Italy. Cool design comes out of Italy. Uh, you know, we do have now Hitachi is going to be taking over the system. They're our neighbors. They're just half, halfway across our ocean, and that's great, too. So a lot of good news to report today, and with that, I'm going to 
turn it back to Dan. Thank you, Dan. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thanks. And Mayor, I can tell you, we will be the only system in the world that does have surfboard racks. So All right. that is a first also in the world. Um, we have great partners uh, in the Mayor's office uh, and great partners at the City Council. The Transportation Chair of the City Council is here to say a few words on behalf of uh, uh, the City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Mayor. Uh, we just wanted to uh, convey our congratulations today uh, to Hart and to the city and county. It's a really good day. Uh, we're very happy with the way uh, rail is progressing. Uh, this year alone, we've done so much uh, to move the issue forward. As the mayor mentioned, we've uh, already got seven miles of guideway constructed. We broke ground on uh, two stations out in Waipahu, and on Monday, we're breaking ground on five more. Uh, so uh, we're, we want to keep the pace going. But today is a, is a really good day. Uh, we're seeing uh, our investment really being realized here today. Uh, and so we're very happy, and we just want to keep uh, things going. So thank you very much. And and thank you for, for letting us be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Um, we have a terrific board of directors that, uh, that runs Hart, and uh, here representing the board is the chair of the board, Don Horner. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your support to get us this far. Obviously, this of the day is a major milestone. I view these trains, which has, these two trains have an economic life of 40 years. Imagine what's going to happen over the next 40 years. These trains will connect communities. They'll connect the homes with the jobs. And so it's, a, it's an important day for us. So it's a day for us to celebrate and thank the hardworking staff of the administration as well as the heart. And thank you for coming. Aloha. And, and, I, and on behalf of Hart, I really do want to acknowledge the hard work of Anseldo Breda, Anseldo STS, and Hitachi. Um, it is a really important milestone in any project, particularly a new system, to have the first prototype train completed and delivered for testing. And to do that um, on the schedule that was given to them a couple years ago is, is a really challenging feat and one that they've been able to accomplish. And so getting the car, these first two cars here, is a significant effort uh, over the last several years to get here. A few days later, Hart broke ground to begin construction of the three West Oahu rail stations, one near the Croc Center in East Kapolei, the other at Ho'opili, and the third at the UH West Oahu. Um, it's just so exciting to be out here on the west side at the very end of our 20-mile elevated rail system. And I mean, you look at it here curving, you know, everyone wonders, what is it going to look like when it's completed? And actually, yeah, perfect would be underground, but for something that's above ground, that looks so much better than the elevated freeway over in Kahala or the airport viaduct. It's a smaller footprint with a lot of huge capacity. And to have it work, you need stations to be built. So out in my hometown of Waipahu, we announced three stations that are going to start a couple weeks ago. And now here, here we are on the west side, three more stations. And if you look at the drawings, they are just so, so beautiful. And we're really excited that Nan Inc. got the bid. And I, when I got here, I asked the Nan Inc., I, hey, where's the guy who actually puts together these bids? Because I want to tell him or her, bid more. Bid more, because more stations are coming down the pike. And we want it to be competitive, because we want to see the best possible price for the taxpayers of the city and county of Honolulu. This three-station bid, $56 million. When we first put the bid out at nine stations, that's when we realized perhaps the project was going to cost more than what we had budgeted. But the good news is they broke apart the bids in the three station packages. And what we really like about that is that local companies now get a chance to bid and actually get awarded the contracts. NAN, local company, born and raised here in the islands, a minority owned business recognized by the SBA and others for the huge work they've done starting from nothing and growing into a significant company. Hawaiian Dredging, who got the Waipahu Station bid, another locally grown company here in Hawaii. So we're very excited about that. And we want to see as we go forward, as more stations go out to bid, that local companies get hired, they hire local labor, and the money stays here. You know, we have unemployment at 2.7% on the island of Oahu. I don't know when it was down to that level ever. And I know when I tell mayors in other cities, they go, nah, you got to be kidding. We know, 2.7%. And a lot of that has to do with our rail project here and the people they're, they're putting back to work. But it also has to do with the people who actually get the bids. Nan Inc., dredging. So guys, sharpen your pencils. 
to be ready to bid at the next station bid that goes out. I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank particularly Ron Menor, the Honolulu City Council, for staying the course. Strong supporter. Represents folks a little bit more close to town, but a great friend at the council. Sharon Har. The fastest growing city in America, Kapolei, she tells me every day. <laughs> Look around, you got UH West Oahu right here. Right where we're sitting is gonna be a parking lot for people to park here. Across the road, you're gonna have a flyover uh, pedestrian bridge to the station, which is across the street. And what I find so exciting is that someone going to school here 25 years from now won't even think twice about getting on the train. They'll assume it's been here forever and all the controversy of today will be long forgotten like H3. And they will get on the train and maybe take a class here at UH West Oahu and then go take a drama class at Leeward Community College. And then maybe go on to Honolulu Community College, take a class there, and then go on to Ala Moana and I think in the future up to UH Manoa. I've been told there's not another system in our country that connects so many institutions of higher earning, er, learning. Four of them, all of them University of Hawaii systems. But guess what? We have a station stopping, right Dan? Right at the bottom of Fort Street Mall, right next to HPU. That's pretty exciting. And we have another one stopping very close to the John A. Burns School of Medicine. I mean, this is a system that's gonna serve higher institutions of learning, allow young adults who can't afford to buy a car to travel from campus to campus, bring their bike on. And if they wanna go surfing, bring your surfboard on. First train in the country, maybe the world, I've been told, Dan, with surfboard racks. I'm excited, I know you are too. This is just another step forward, sprinting to a better future. I wanna thank everyone for their hard work. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you very much, Mayor. In 2012, we went to Washington to seek $1.55 billion of funding from the federal government to fund about a third of the cost of this project. And I can remember back to 2012, uh, like it was yesterday, there was a lot of fear, would we actually get uh, this grant? It was going to be, if, it, if awarded, the single largest federal grant in the United States of America for a rail project. And with the amazing work of our delegation, we not only got that money, but then every single year since, we've been able to answer one of the most important questions that I get, which is, is the Congress actually going to appropriate $250 million this year again for this project in order to fulfill the full $1.55 billion? And, and our congressional delegation has been fantastic. We have literally gotten every single de federal dollar that has been promised and pledged back in 2012. So much, and if you can believe it, the amount of the money that's moving through the, the process right now the fi is the final payment on $1.55 billion already. The Congress has already appropriated over a billion dollars, and that's in our bank account in Washington. That is no small feat. And I think when we look back on how much we feared, would we actually get the money, it's really important today in 2016 to acknowledge the amazing dedication of our delegation, in fact, getting that done. And representing our delegation, we're very, very proud and pleased to have Senator Maisie Hirono. Oh my goodness, see, I always worry about this, but um, I'm gonna stand back here because all these mics are here. Thank you so much, Dan. I wanna thank all of the workers. I know we have IBW here, we have the carpenters. Are there other unions here today, this morning? Thank you very much for all of your people who are making this a reality. And of course, I wanna thank the mayor and Ram Manor, with whom I served long time, right, Ron? Thank you for being a member of the council who is so supportive. And of course, Sharon Haar, who used to work for me, by the way, but she's doing a good job as a member of the state legislature. 
uh, to the Heart Board, to the to all of the people who have been uh, stalwart supporters of this project. Yes, it was very critical that uh, the federal government made a commitment through a, a full funding agreement, and that agreement would not have happened if they had not been convinced that this project was on track and it was going to do what it, it purported or what our mission was, which is to move our people in a way that would get them from point A to point B, C, D, uh, in a way that would be helpful and supportive of our community. As we all know, traffic congestion is a major issue in Honolulu. We are one of the most congested cities in the entire country. I know families and people who have to get up at 4 a.m. to catch the bus to go to work or to get in their cars and be able to get, get to work every single day. Traffic is a huge problem and challenge in our city and this is where Hart is going to come into play. I have been a supporter of Hart since uh, the beginning and I'm proud to represent the members of our Hawaii delegation who will definitely make sure that the $244 million that is in the uh, President's budget for fiscal year 2017 also comes here so that we can finish our project. It's always been up and down, but you know what? Um, we, are, we have to stay the course on this because it's going to improve the lives of the people of the city and county of Honolulu. I also want to thank the Heart Board. I think it is going to be very important as you go forward with the transit uh, stations that you listen to the communities that the project goes through, as you did in Waipahu, to make sure that we're minimizing the negative impact of the building and construction on our businesses along the route. And of course, transit-oriented development is going to be another really important part of, uh, of HART. We can either have transit stations, HART stations that uh, are barren, that where the, there's not much going on, or we can have transit-oriented development of the kind that will bring our community together to places where they can see art, where they can interact. And so uh, I'm really proud of the progress we've made, and going forward, you will continue to have the support of the uh, congressional delegation. Aloha, mahalo. One of the themes of these events is always partnerships, and there's partnership with the mayor's office, partnership with our congressional delegation, and certainly partnership with our city council. Um, the city council members, uh, city council chair Ernie Martin, and all the members of the council um, have been just so supportive of the project, um, have kept our feet to the fire when we need to keep our feet to the fire to do the right things in the right ways, and to do what we can to try to maintain costs as low as they can be, um, and also get this thing built as sensitively to the community as Senator Hirono mentioned. Um, I've heard from many of the council members over the, uh, since construction has started over these months, to make sure that we in fact are sensitive to the businesses along the, the route, and we will do that as well with the stations. Um, but in representing the city council here today is council member Ron Menor, and I just want to say thank you, council member, for your staunch support for the project, and please come up and say a few words. Uh, good morning to all of you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, it really is a pleasure for me to be able to represent the City Council at this groundbreaking. I was asked by my colleagues to be here today because they recognize the fact that the uh, uh, opening of these stations and eventually the full operation of rail will benefit many of the residents whom I represent uh, in this area. Uh, as the uh, legislators who uh, represent West Oahu will attest, and I know that uh, Representatives Haar and Lopresti would agree to this. For our constituents, uh, traffic congestion has uh, become uh, quite intolerable. And of course, our traffic woes will only get worse as our population continues to grow. It's been projected that uh, from 2015 to 2030, that the population in this area will increase by over 60,000 people. And so we can anticipate worsening traffic. So rail is clearly important from the standpoint of addressing the transportation needs, not only of our entire island, but especially for this particular region. And I also think that, that it's important from a transportation planning perspective that this groundbreaking, the opening of these uh, rail stations, would be occurring adjacent to the UH West Oahu campus. As a state senator, uh, I strongly supported the location of the UH West Oahu campus in the Kapolei uh, area, not only to meet the educational needs of our young people, but also because from a transportation perspective, uh, I realized that it would help to redirect uh, traffic away from the heavily congested urban core 
out to the secondary urban center here in the Ever Plains by creating a campus that students can travel to and attend as an alternative to the UH Manoa campus. So in that regard, I believe that the opening of these stations and the uh, full operation of rail will be consistent with that vision and that long-term plan and would be kept compatible for the tremendous growth that's going to be planned for this particular area. And finally, I wanted to echo what the mayor had indicated, that we are building rail and opening up these stations not only to address the needs of uh, residents who currently have to deal with traffic congestion on a daily basis, but also for future generations of Oahu citizens. And so when these stations open up, it will be appreciated by our children and our grandchildren for many years to come. We're really building it for the future of this region and for the entire island. So on that note, I just wanted to uh, thank all of those who uh, contributed to the uh, groundbreaking today, and of course, special thanks to many who uh, have brought this project to this point. The mayor, of course. Uh, we can't forget uh, uh, Senator Hirono, and please keep the federal dollars flowing to uh, to this project. I see my good friend uh, Damian Kim from IBW, of course, the contractors who made this possible. Thank you for uh, this day and for allowing me to participate. And uh, looking forward to the groundbreaking. Mahalo. So we've made mention of the folks that we're really trying to serve along the alignment and in Leeward, uh, Oahu. And uh, we have two uh, members of the state legislature who are here today uh, representing those, those uh, constituents and our future riders. So I'd first like to ask uh, Representative Sharon Har if she'd come up and say a few words. Good morning, aloha. Welcome to Kapolei. Um, I'm always excited when so many big names come out here. Uh, every day I drive on Kualaka'i. I live just past Kapolei Parkway. And so I've seen this fixed guideway up for many months now. And other uh, colleagues of mine who come out here, they're always excited to say, oh my gosh. And I said, this has been up for quite some time. Are you kidding me? We've been doing, we're going gangbusters out here in Kapolei. Um, obviously, it's just a, such an exciting day because we are breaking ground on these first three rail stations. You know, these first three rail stations will really set the stage for the economic development that will occur at all of the stations uh, on Oahu. You know, Senator Hirono mentioned transit-oriented development. Um, Dan Grabowskis knows and Brennan knows that, um, and so does, I think, Ivan. They all know that, and George Atta. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunate, but fortunately, I was named the de facto West Oahu Transit-Oriented Development Subcommittee Chair. And we've been having several meetings regarding transit-oriented development and what it means to each community. You know, as Senator Hirono mentioned, transit-oriented development, it's not going to be just about these stations. It's going to be about the economic development and the businesses and the jobs that will be created through transit-oriented development. And obviously, in turn, by having transit-oriented development and the businesses and the jobs, it will be convenience for our residents and our riders. And that's what it's all about. It's connecting the communities through all of uh, rail. And that's what it's going to be bringing to the island of Oahu. So I, there are so many people I want to thank. First and foremost, Dan Grabowskis and Brennan Moore. You know, we've gone through battles together, and you guys have stood the course. Thank you for being so strong. Um, you guys have had to come to the legislature and beg, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but I thank you for your leadership and for your uh, and for really being tenacious in this process. Of course, Mayor Caldwell, one of my dearest friends, who I had the pleasure of serving in the legislature with, he was probably one of the greatest majority leaders. Um, I was a freshman and out of control, and he did a very good job of reining me in. Um, he has been wonderful in terms of his uh, poise with this project. He has been highly criticized. And again, just like he said about Representative Lopresti, it's the right thing to do. And so he will continue to stay the course. You know, thank you for being such a supporter of West Oahu, Mayor Caldwell. You are truly a wonderful leader for this island. Um, of course, I want to thank Senator Hirono, as she mentioned. I had the pr a privilege of working for her. Uh, people say, oh, you know, you have such a strong backbone. Where did you get it? And I say a lot of it came from my training when I worked with her when she was a lieutenant governor. So I'm so proud of her serving in our congressional delegation. Senator, thank you for your support of West Oahu for this project. And as uh, Council Member Menor said, we know that you and our congressional delegation will ensure that the federal dollars keep coming in. Obviously, with uh, the Council, Ron Menor, I've known you for many years as well. Uh, unfortunately, Kimberly Pine is not here either, but I'd like to thank the two of you for your strong support. It's been a pleasure working with you folks on this project. Of course, my colleague, Matt Lopresti, um, he is new to the legislature. He's our Vice Chair of Transportation, and he will stand and do what uh, is right because he knows we have to do what is right by the residents of West Oahu. And of course, I need to thank the board 
of heart. Um, under the leadership of Don Horner, a dear friend of mine who I had the utmost respect for, um, you know, Ivan, Damien, George, you guys have taken cracks, and I'm not going to deny that. It has been a tough road for you folks. Um, I'm ecstatic that we have now uh, Congresswoman um, uh, Hanabusa added to the board. I think she adds a nice mix. But I think that you guys have really taken a lot of the heat on this project, and yet you continue to be tenacious because you understand the importance of this project and what it means, not just to the residents of the West Side, but to all of Oahu and what it will mean for the way we live and improving our qualities of life. So to all of the workers, Nan Inc., Korean owners, I'm Korean, so thank you for all your hard work. No change orders, guys, okay? And I want to thank all of everybody who's been involved in this project. Um, I want to just say very quickly, my colleague, Ty Cullen, uh, Representative Ty Cullen, he represents the Ho'opili Station. For, uh, I represent the first two stations, and he represents the Ho'opili Station. Unfortunately, he could not be here this morning, but he did send his regrets. So on behalf of the West Oahu uh, Hawaii State Legislature Delegation, we want to thank all of you for your hard work on this project, and let's keep going forward. Aloha. Kahu Cordell Keikoa led the traditional untying of the Miley, and work on our rail stations is now underway. The staff and management of HART appreciates the support of our elected representatives and looks forward to working closely with our local, state, and federal officials well into the future. On behalf of all of us on the project team, mahalo for joining us today, and we'll see you again next time for another edition of Honolulu on the Move. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on our next Honolulu on the Move show, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter or Facebook, just two of the places where you can stay informed with up-to-date information on the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. And you can view our latest project videos on our YouTube channel. If you'd like more information on the project or would like a presentation to your group or organization, give us a call at our project hotline at 566-2299 or contact us via our website at honolulutransit.org. You'll be able to keep up with the latest news and information about the project, important meeting dates, times, and locations, and examine the official documents that are guiding the project's planning and construction. Take some time to visit honolulutransit.org. <laughs>